Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, in this last look in our three-part look at the title tool, we're going to take a look at creating some gradients and transparencies with our text and we're going to talk about title rolls and title crawls and how you're going to be able to create them quickly and easily inside of the title tool and get them into your timeline in seconds instead of having to sit there for a long time and trying to figure out how you're going to take something that was actually rendered out as being seven minutes and compacting it down into being about 10 seconds. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt tab into Symphony, obviously Command tab for all of my Mac friends out there. And first we're going to talk about how to create color gradients across your text. So obviously the first thing we need is a new title. I'm going to navigate up to clip. I'm going to come down to new title. We'll select, of course, the standard title tool. And what I'm going to do just for the purposes of us seeing what's going on, I'm just going to make the background here white. There we go. And I'm going to make our text blue. So let's just select the blue color for the fill. Very nice. And we'll just type in, how about creative cow? And of course, we're going to make this font impact. There we go. Very nice. And let's make the size, I don't know, about 175. Hopefully that's not too big. I think that's looking pretty good. Now, the only reason I chose that white background is because it's a little bit hard to see over top of the text. You know what? I don't even mind if creative cow is on two lines. We'll just adjust our leading here. Remember, not our leading, our leading. And we're just going to center up our text here. Very cool. You'll remember we learned that in a previous lesson. Now what I want to do is I want to get in and I want to create a gradient color to go across my text, not just the flat blue color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have the color go from blue to red. Now you'll remember in the previous tutorial we talked about getting in and changing the color of our fills, our shadows, and our borders by simply selecting what we want to change and just getting in and changing the color. Now there is something else that you can do. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the fill color again. You'll notice as soon as I select the fill, I suddenly now have these two other boxes over here and you'll see that they're called Blend and Transparency Preview. And you'll see I can select the next one. It says the exact same thing, Blend and Transparency Preview. Well, most people don't actually know what this does. What this actually does is set up our gradient. So blue is the color I want to start with and I'm going to switch the go to color to be, like I said before, red. And as soon as I do, you can see I now have a gradient going across my text, starting at blue over here and ending in red over here with purple in the middle. And you're also going to notice that it treats both lines of text as one. Very nice. If I wanted to change this up and I wanted to have creative as one color gradient, cow as another color gradient, all I would do is create them as two separate layers. And to get in and adjust how this gradient moves very easy, you're going to see that I have a little preview window down here that I can simply just click on and adjust something a little bit like that. Very quick, very easy to create gradients on top of your text. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a new title. I'm not going to save this one because I want to talk about transparency now. And the perfect example to use for transparency is to use a lower third. This is something I do all the time. When I need to get in, create a quick down and dirty lower third, I do this all the time. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Again, we're going to navigate up to clip. We're going to come down to new title. And what I want to do is I'm just going to put a name super across the bottom of the screen. We'll just use my name. Why not? So normally what I do is I'll just type in my name first. So we'll type in Kevin. Let's make sure I do this properly here. Kevin P. McAuliffe. And I'll be a trainer for creative cow. Not too much of a stretch. So again, I'm going to go back to my favorite font here, Impact. Obviously, you can use whatever font you want. And we'll just adjust our lighting here. We'll make it minus 20. That's okay. I want to have the text nice and tight together. Now, again, what we're going to do is we're going to create a drop shadow. I'll give it a value of 3 here. There we go. And let's soften it up a bit here. Just apply that. Very nice. Now what I want to do is I want to put the lower third in behind. And in most cases, I just use a solid color that has a transparency on it. So let's create a solid background to put behind my text. So I'm just going to grab the rectangle tool here. We're just going to draw a rectangle. I don't even need to draw it that thick because I can adjust this after the fact. Now, what's important here is I don't want a drop shadow on it. You'll see it remembers the drop shadow properties from when I added it to my name super down here. And what we're going to do now is just change the fill color because 
White is not that attractive of a color. I'm just going to pick blue. That's looking pretty nice. Now what I want to do is I want to do essentially what I had done before. I want to have a bit of a gradient, but what the gradient we're going to have is I want the opacity to go from full to nothing over here. And how we actually get in and do that is very simple. You'll remember again, like I told you, left column here is to adjust the color for the fill, the shadow, and the border. But what happens when I come over here and click on the other box? You're going to see as soon as I bring the mouse over top of it, it's called the fill transparency selection. What I'm going to do is just select it. You're going to see that nothing happens. But now, instead of much like with color, if I click on it and hold, I get the color picker. What happens with transparency is something a little bit different. If I click on it and hold it, I now have the slider bar that says opaque on the left, transparent on the right. Right now, it's set to 100% opaque, meaning I can't see through this element. But what if I wanted to put that at about 50%? You know what? No problem. I'm just going to drag it to 50% here and let go. And you can see now that the entire element is 50% transparent. But like I said before, what I want to do is I want to have it as a bit of a gradient. I want it to be full on the left, and I want it to taper off on the right. So let's set this back to be completely opaque. You'll see again, as soon as I click on that and hold it, or actually once I click on it right here, I now have these two different boxes here. And instead of having color pickers when I select them, I have that same transparency slider. Hmm, very interesting. I wonder what's going to happen here. Well, you'll notice that with the first one, when I click on it, opaque, right now is set to zero. So meaning this entire image is opaque. Now you're going to see that as soon as I click on the other one, it's telling me that it's transparent, but nothing is actually happening. Well, that's because I just have to kind of give it a little bit of a kick here. And there we go. We now have our gradient happening where it's 100% opaque on this side, 100% transparent on this side. And obviously, again, much like before, I can get in and I can adjust that however I want. So for example, if I wanted the lower third to sit at the bottom of the screen here, what we'll do is just drag this up a little bit here. You know, maybe set it off frame like such. Put it right down here. And what I can do again, remember, I can send this object to the back. We've now created a pretty cool lower third, very quick and very simple. Now what I was going to do is the standard sort of lower third that I create here. Let's just adjust the size of this here because we want to make sure that we can fit it in the frame. There we go. Perfect. And I'm just going to adjust this like such. Now white, remember, represents 100% opaque. So this is not see-through right on the very uh, leftmost edge here. And of course, 100% transparent over here. Now all I have to do is sort of position this up where I want it to go, right about there. Let's just undo. I don't want to move that text. I just want to move the box here. We'll just move it slightly off frame. I'm just going to adjust it out here. Now all I have to do is just bring it down like such. And I've now created, now what we want to do is not move everything, we just want to adjust the top here. There. See, sometimes it requires just a, there we go, a little bit of fine touching here. Let's see, am I moving everything? I think I got it. There we go. Perfect. So you can see getting in and creating a simple lower third inside of the basic title tool, very quick, very easy. And you really have a lot of flexibility with this. Most people just think, oh, it's just to throw some white text on a screen. You'll see from what I just showed you, you can get in, you can add gradients, you can add transparencies, you can add shapes. And the one last thing that I didn't show you that I'm just going to show you right now before I talk about title scrolls and title crawls is another really cool feature. And this is something that, believe it or not, I actually do use all the time when I'm doing corporate videos. You know, you always have clients that will get in and they'll talk about, you know, let's talk about these five points. Point number one is this. Point number two is this. Point number three is this. In a lot of cases, what I like to do is actually have an arrow go in and show, you know, this is point number one, this is point number two. And how many times do you find yourself going out to Photoshop or another application to create a simple arrow? You know what? Don't need to do that here. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to delete this lower third. I'm going to come to the line tool. Most people think, oh, the line tool, you know, not a big deal. You can just come in and draw a straight line. Yes, you can. Now, what's going on here is remember, it's keeping the transparency settings that I just had. And what we want to do here is just set this to be opaque as well. There we go. And I'm just going to pick the color as white, just so we can see it very easily here. Very nice. Now, if I want to get in and adjust the thickness of this line, we can just come right down here to the border width tool, come in, just adjust that, make it nice and thick. And you'll see right beside it, we now have the arrowhead tool, meaning that I can get in and actually add an arrowhead on the end of this straight line. Now, of course, I can spin this around, have the arrow point whatever direction I want. I can move it over and say, you know, maybe we're talking about this helmet right here. Of course, I can add drop shadows and such and the like. What I can also do is actually come in and I can choose the size of the arrowhead that I want. So maybe I need the arrowhead to be nice and big like such. There we go. And of course, we can have one here. We can have one over here. 
We could even have it up here and adjusting it by simply grabbing the end and spinning it around. It's very, very simple. Another little sort of bell and whistle inside the title tool, but you know what? All the bells and whistles add up when you don't have to leave the NLE to create these little things that are going to help you get the job done that much faster. Okay, so let's talk about rolls and crawls now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the title tool here. I am not going to save. And let's just create another new title. Okay, now much like we've done before, what we're going to do is navigate up to clip. We're going to come down to new title. Now, I'm not going to create both a scroll and a crawl because once you see how one is done, the other works exactly the same. So, what we're going to do to turn on the crawl or the roll, it's actually called a roll inside of the title tool, is we're just going to navigate right down here to the two buttons and we're going to choose the one that we want. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose a crawl across the bottom of the screen. Now, you're going to notice as soon as I click on crawl, a bar has appeared here. Now, if I was to click on roll, the bar would appear here. Obviously, we're talking about horizontal navigation versus vertical navigation. Now what I need to do is just type something in here. So let's type in creative cow rocks with a big exclamation mark. So again, let's just add a drop shadow here. And we'll just set a value of two here. Hold on, let's just click out here. Say two, there we go. Soften this up a bit here. Say apply, perfect. And let's just say okay. We're gonna position this roughly where we want it to go. Again, impact, let's make sure we get an impact. There we go, cool. And what I want to do is I want to select this title by copying it. And what we're going to do is paste a few instances of it in. But you'll see as soon as I do that the Creative Cow Rocks, the next instance of it, was put down below. Why is that? Because my uh, bounding box here is right up to the edge of Creative Cow Rocks. So what I want to do, because I want to create a crawl across the bottom of the screen, is I want to stretch this bounding box way out. And watch what happens to the bar as soon as I start doing this. You're going to see that now suddenly the bar has appeared over here. And what I can do now is just drag all the way back to where I was. And you'll see how long I've created this crawl. Very cool. Now, what we're going to do is just position this where we want it to go. And what we're going to do is select all of Creative Cow Rocks by simply hitting Control and A on Windows, Command and A on the Mac. I'm going to hit Control and C to copy that. And all we're going to do is we're just going to drag over here to Creative Cow Rocks. Now remember, the background's not going to update because really all we're dealing with right now is the crawl. So what I'm going to do is just come in. I'm just going to paste, and I'm going to paste, and I'm going to paste. And you'll see what's happening down here is this bar is moving. And you'll see I can come all the way down and take a look at how long this crawl is now across the bottom of the screen. So let's just say hypothetically this is all I wanted and I was happy with this. Now remember, because it's a crawl, Safe title and safe picture really is irrelevant because this is going to appear and disappear on the screen. So let's just save this out. I'm simply going to close the title tool. I'm going to say save. You'll see that in a matter of seconds my animation was created. We'll simply call it title crawl appropriately enough. I'm going to say save and it's going to appear in the bin. Now you're going to see what happens is, is that in my preview window here I now have the crawling title. It's called title crawl. And the standard default length for all titles created when you save them out of the title tool is two minutes. And you'll see that as I drag down, this one's a little bit different. This one goes on for a long time. This one goes on for like seven minutes. So how are we going to get in and tell the actual, you know, title itself that we don't want you to be seven seconds? We only want you to appear over, oh, I don't know, let's say, you know, seven seconds. Instead of seven minutes, it's going to be seven seconds. So what we do to actually tell Media Composer Symphony that we want it to be in that short of a time is nothing. We just edit the title into the timeline. As soon as I edit it into the timeline, Symphony or Media Composer is going to look at the length of the clip that I've now edited in, and it's going to take this long seven minute crawl, and it's going to compact it down into seven seconds. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to render this out quickly here. You'll see how fast this renders. There you go. Once it's done, believe it or not, my crawl is ready to go. I'm just going to clear the screen here just because it gets a bit confusing seeing it stretch all the way across. And check out how fast this is going to go now. Because remember, I created a lot of them. But you see that Symphony, in this case, took that huge long crawl and basically fit it inside of whatever duration I needed it to go. I didn't need to do anything else. I didn't need to think of anything. All I needed to do was drop it into my timeline, hit render, and I can keep going. And really, that's an effect that if you did that in After Effects, would take, first of all, you'd have to export however many clips you need. You'd have to get in. You'd have to create it. You'd have to render it out. You'd have to bring it back in. But you'll see all of this was done right from within the comfort of the title tool and a simple edit 
in my timeline. Now, one thing I do want to point out is we talked about the crawl, the roll or the scroll is done exactly the same. Like I said, the only difference is, is that we're dealing with vertical instead of horizontal. So I hope this in-depth three-part look at the title tool is now going to help you get in and create some basic titles really quickly. And you see that we do have a lot of flexibility with those quote-unquote basic titles to get in and create some very cool color looks, save those styles, save out those rolls and crawls, and drop them into your timeline and be up and running with them in no time flat. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at Gmail. Dot com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.